Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at another product from Miniware which is the DT71 digital tweezers and if you're a regular viewer to the channel you may recall back in January I think it was video 102 link just up there uh, I looked at the Miniware's digital oscilloscope and I was quite impressed with that uh, diminutive instrument um, it was seemed a, a very capable and well-made piece of kit so without further ado let's go to the bench and have a look what uh, these tweezers do okay i'm going to start off by looking at a pair of analog tweezers as you can see here and um, if you're detecting a hint of sarcasm in the analog tweezers then you'd be right although none of that is in any way directed at uh, the miniware product um, i've just occasionally seen digital used to describe all manner of things that certainly aren't digital and i'm always amused at uh, marketing departments seem to think that putting digital in front of something makes it cooler um, I'm pleased to say I'm not fooled um, the reason I wanted to put a pair of analog tweezers here is to show you that these digital tweezers really are um, only very slightly bigger than a conventional pair of tweezers so it's a, a small piece of kit um, so let's look at what we've got uh, in the box and in the box we obviously get the tweezers themselves we get two USB leads, a spare pair of uh, tips which can be attached to the um, tweezers there and there is an instruction um, card. The instruction card incidentally uh, does contain some instructions but there's a much more comprehensive set of instructions available online as a PDF um, and I'll put as many links as I can to these things in the uh, in the description for you. So why two, two USB leads? Well um, that's because if you do that you can actually separate um, the tweezers into two halves. So we have the tweezer legs and the what I'm going to call the display body uh, and that looks suspiciously like a, a three and a half mil um, a jack plug and indeed it is a three and a half mil jack plug. So there are two um, two USB leads for this. Now uh, the first one here which has the plug on it um, is the means of charging up the instrument because the batteries are apparently held in the two tweezer legs here. So the legs themselves uh, contain the power source and there is an LED there which lights up when uh, to indicate the charging state. Uh, and the second USB lead which has got a socket on um, is for attaching uh, to the display head and there are plenty of warnings on the um, instructions that this isn't for charging the head that doesn't contain batteries this is for doing firmware updates or if you're feeling really brave you can also um, uh, modify a couple of things but more of that later um, I didn't need to update the firmware as the latest online firmware is uh, what was installed in this instrument uh, when it arrived so uh, we connect them together like so just take quite a firm push and as I've started up anyway um, ordinarily if you wanted to start them up you just touch the tips together um, so one thing I will say here is the display probably looks quite small to you um, it is quite small but remember you're going to be using these in small equipment and actually I don't find it in any way uh, difficult to read this display although I do appreciate it's probably quite difficult to, to show it you uh, on the camera so let's uh, now have a look at the spec and then we'll um, we'll put the instrument through its paces okay here's the table of the um, measurement uh, specifications lifted straight from the miniware manual uh, so it'll look at resistance, diodes, capacitance, inductance, frequency and voltage. Uh, it doesn't do current, um, but it does do all the things you can see there. Plus it's also got a, a signal generator. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick some uh, capacitors that are somewhere near the range limits and, and some diodes and we'll just, um, we'll just see what kind of results we get uh, and hopefully um, you, can, you can see the instrument performing. So that's the spec. Um, it certainly isn't going to replace your multimeter obviously because there are other things a multimeter will do in particular um, current which might be important for you to need to measure um, however this is a, 
I think a niche product and it does actually uh, very much do what it says on the tin when it comes to working with small components. So let's take a look at that now. Okay before we look at resistance I'm going to do the calibration so several long presses of the button on the end here which it's like a touch pad uh, takes you to calibration it's now asking me to close the tips so we'll do that asking me to keep them closed now it's asking me to open and leave them open now save data is a single press and now it's uh, in the um, position to measure okay so having completed the calibration we're now in resistance mode the spec says it'll do 0.1 ohms to 2 mega ohms so here's a 4.7 ohm resistor there and hopefully if I can get the display the right way up for you to see uh, it's showing up as exactly 4.7 ohms there so that's good and maximum resistance was 2 mega ohms so just to stretch it a bit this is a 3.3 meg so let's see what it makes of that and that's saying 3.25 mega ohms um, so it's more than capable of doing its resistance range I'll get set up now with some capacitors next we'll look at uh, capacitance so I've got again um, going to both ends of the range it, the spec is uh, stated as being 0.1 picofarads to 1000 picofarads and then from uh, up to 400 microfarads so I've got a 56 picofarad capacitor here let's just see what she makes of that 57.8p yeah that's pretty good really I would imagine putting the probes close together is probably going to give you um, there you go 1.5 picofarad so um, I think it's done rather well to get that and then here I've got a it's saying 400 microfarads is the top so I've got a 470 microfarad electrolytic here um, there is a red and a blue mark on the um, tweezer tips so I'm making sure I've got the correct polarity and it's pretty quick to identify that as about 455 microfarads something like that it's supposed to be a 470 so again I think that's um, that's done rather well let's now have a look at um, inductance onto inductance then so spec says uh, 1 micro henry to 50 milli henry so I've got a 1 micro henry inductor here let's see what she makes of that 1.1 micro henrys and I don't have anything approaching 50 milli henrys the nearest I can get there is 2.2 .2 milli henrys which is this one and I'm sorry it's not 2.2 it's 4.7 milli henrys and um, the machine is making it 4.37 milli henrys so it uh, doesn't seem to be doing too bad on inductance as I say I've not got anything uh, near the far end of the range but you can uh, you get the gist okay so I've got um, bench power supply set to its minimum and uh, according to my uh, multimeter here we've got about 89 millivolts something like that so let's see what the tweezers make of it tweezers are making that appreciate you probably can't see that very well uh, about 86.987 millivolts so within a couple of millivolts I don't know if how accurate the car weights meter is but as you can see it's pretty close right let's now go absolutely right to the top of the voltage range that I can produce on my bench supply and let's see what the chi weights is going to make of that so that's saying 30.73 volts DC so that's 30.7 and the tweezers are making that 30.7 exactly so clearly very accurate right at the uh, the top end of the range or certainly agrees with the other meter so that's voltage Okay, frequency. Um, rather than bore you with uh, connecting the signal generator, but I'm just going to make use of the one kilohertz output off my scope here. Um, so it's quite a handy way to produce one kilohertz, and you can hopefully see there, small though the display is in this particular um, from this angle, uh, it's showing it's varying between one kilohertz and a thousand hertz. It can't quite make its mind up which mode to display, but as you can see, measuring frequency rather well so that would be quite handy on a on a circuit board if you wanted to uh, measure the frequency of an oscillator maybe as the stated um, 
uh, frequency measurement ranges from 10 hertz to um, well actually it's saying 20 megahertz so um, that, that's quite reasonable okay so I'm gonna have a look at the diode function and uh, I want to also show you what uh, this instrument excels as and of course that's its ability to check um, very small um, in particular surface mount components now I don't do very much with um, circuit boards uh, I don't have the skills to design them and the only time I ever use circuit boards is when they come with kits um, unfortunately the couple of printed circuit board companies haven't spotted that and they're very keen uh, to sponsor me but I keep telling them that's not something I do so hopefully one day they'll get that message um, so on here we've got a couple of surface mount diodes I appreciate you can't see them terribly well this is the N7 DDC um, antenna tuner certainly Tony Albus has just done a review of the um, the ready built version of this which is worth a look I'll, I'll put a link up there for you um, so there's a couple of surface mount diodes here so if I put the tweezers in diode mode across there it's telling me 548 millivolts which is a forward voltage drop and uh, same for that one 532 millivolts and if I just whiz the board round we should get uh, nothing at all here uh, and indeed we don't as you'd expect because that's reverse that's reverse uh, biased there we go um, now the other thing it'll do of course is it will measure um, some surface mount components in circuit you have to be careful doing that because sometimes um, other components may be having a, a bit of an influence on it but if I change the tweezers to resistance there are a couple here which will, it will correctly identify appreciate you're not going to be able to see those terribly well so on there is a 68k resistor and if I can hold it uh, steady enough for you to do it um, 68.7k there's another one there I don't know if it'll pick that up I think that must be in no there we go yes yeah, 68.7 it's just my um, my poor um, poor way of holding it onto the uh, circuit board that's the issue so uh, the reason I wanted to do this uh, surface, surface mount work is just too small for my um, 60 plus year old eyes and so I just avoid it as much as I can uh, but this I think is really where this device would come into its own because although the display is very small when you're working here looking at that 68k resistor uh, you just glance across and the display is nice and easy to read and it looks positively large compared to to the component um, so I think for use on um, service mount boards or identifying service mount components perhaps when you're building a project uh, this would be really really good indeed um, now there is another function so um, I'll get set up and we'll um, we'll take a look at that okay and finally let's look at um, the sync generator function and what better way to do it than use the miniware DS213 uh, digital scope so um, it is possible to change all sorts of parameters on the um, signal generator um, I don't propose to go into that now you can even set up an arbitrary wave if you're feeling very brave it does um, give you the instructions on how to do that it does involve entering hexadecimal numbers but it is possible to do it so uh, as it comes it's produced near a sine wave 10 kilohertz and you can see it's doing that um, rather nicely no problem at all and it does indeed say 10 kilohertz there um, a short tap should take me to 100 kilohertz noise and yep certainly got some noise there that's a particularly useful um, feature for uh, for checking um, for checking through circuits I find I've often used a noise generator and then we've got the user 10 kilohertz currently that's set to sign um, we've also got 100 kilohertz pulse and that is indeed 100 kilohertz there you can hopefully see without me faffing on and changing the time base but you can see the pulse so that's actually um, quite a nice feature and you may be thinking well it's a bit of a gimmick putting a signal generator on there mm, yeah maybe it is maybe it isn't because if you set that to let's say I don't know 800 hertz or 
a kilohertz, something like that, and you're trying to trace a fault in an audio amplifier, you've potentially got a very convenient way of injecting a signal into um, bits of circuit that you uh, need to check. You could easily get the one probe of the tips onto the uh, say the base of a transistor or something trying to, if you're trying to fault find. So that's the signal generator function. Works rather well. OK, well that's about it for my look at the Miniware Digital Tweezers. Um, and I actually think it's a very nice piece of kit. Uh, it feels um, well made and I appreciate saying something feels well made is extremely subjective. But like their little oscilloscope, uh, it does feel like a a very a very solid bit of kit considering its its size and it's certainly something I would use if I was working with um, surface mount components a lot so yeah handy bit of kit there's links um, to where you can get these uh, in the description and there's also one or two other links that you might um, find useful so I'd encourage you to have a look at those thanks very much for watching hope um, hope it's been useful and look forward to seeing you on the next video